Hi, AJ Hartley here, novelist, Shakespeare professor, Atarashi Gakko fan, and I'm going to talk today about one of the recent songs that's associated with a movie. There have been a spate of interesting and um, engaging music and teases of other possibilities. We'll see if something with Megan the Stallion materializes at some point. But right now, they're getting a lot of attention because of their Japanese version of the Ghostbusters theme music, which goes with the Frozen Empire um, iteration of the franchise. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Hope you like it. So uh, I, I know some fans have been not especially enthusiastic about this song, but I actually think it's a really cool retake on the original 1984 Ray Parker Jr. song for Ghostbusters. Obviously, it uses that same core keyboard refrain. This is a lighter, more electronic version of it. It lacks the sort of funky playfulness of the original but this has a different kind of energy obviously the the video is shot partly on the set partly it, by intercutting it with scenes from the movie and i think some of it was actually shot in new york and it combines images of the atarashi gakko girls as both the victims and as kind of the ghosts and as the ghost hunters in the course of the video so and we're playing with images of of fear and of cold because obviously the the movie is ghostbusters frozen empire lyrically we start off with with the ghostbusters title and then koina koina it's it's scary it's scary a, a line that they have used virtually the same before in a previous ghost song hanako <laughs> Atarashi Gakko have a couple of different investments in, in, in scary stuff. They made their own low-budget horror movie centered on a deserted school, and we're going to see echoes of that in some of the, the song lyrics in the course of the, the piece. Kano? 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 So it's scary, it's scary, Yoru Kairi Michi, uh, on, the, on the way home at night. So one of the things that I think is interesting about their take on this situation is that instead of embracing the fantasy dimension of the movie, their versions of what's scary tend to be smaller, more local, and more the kind of things that ordinary people, and particularly young people, are afraid of. Koina, koina, sugu ushiru ni iru. So something right behind me. So here comes Ren. I love how the, the song gives each of the members of the group an opportunity to do their thing. And, and I love the way that one of the things that I think the song does really well is that it allows the band to claim a kind of ownership of this sort of iconic material. And they do it by reframing the context and the, the ghost stuff in specifically Japanese terms and in terms that are familiar from previous Atarashi Gakko songs. So here we go, A, B, C, D, E, F, Ghost. I love that. I, I love the way that a lot of what Rin's sections do is that they present it almost like a schoolroom exercise, which makes sense of the the school uniform that they always wear, um, as if this is a, a class A B C D E F G, obviously, but here G is ghost. Imu demo shide yoku iku haikyo. So the 
ruins or uh, um, abandoned places that I I sometimes visit to to test myself. So it's like a, a game that, that kids play where you go to the scary places, the witch house or the haunted house or whatever, to to prove your 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 courage, right? Fusuma no sukima yo ano gekko. So the the ruins, but also the the gaps between the shoji, the sliding screens. That are um, that you, you see through, and you th- think you see movement through them, and Ogeko, that that school, right? So again, the, that kids sense that the empty school is a haunted place, which of course they have used in their previous material. Doko demo hisande iru kito. I'm sure they're lurking everywhere, somewhere through through these places that I can't quite see. Hito kuro, I'm sure they'll they're going to come, and then. I struggled with this because I was trying to make sense of I, Yue, Obake, and as if I and Yue were, were words, and I couldn't make sense of it. And I was talking to Stephen, a.k.a. Funny Toss, and he helped me figure out the obvious, that, of course, it's actually I, E, U, E, Obake. So it's not a word, the first part, I, E, U, E is not a word. It's that sequence of the way that Japanese language is alphabetized. When you're learning Japanese, you learn it in terms of those um, syllabic units, a, e, u, a, o, kaki, ku, keko, mami, mu, mem, all that stuff, right? So here it's a, e, u, e, o, bake. The, and the, the o becomes the honorific part of o, bake. Bake means mm, monster or supernatural force it's um it can mean it can mean ghost but it's in a fairly generalized sense uh, it, it's a bit closer to yokai than it is to yurei yurei is the japanese word meaning what we generally associate with ghosts which is the spirit of a dead person but then the movie isn't entirely even though it's called ghostbusters it's not entirely really about ghosts there are some that look like um, they are sort of spirits of dead people, but others are not, right? The Slimer and the, the, the stuff, the thing that eats everything, I forget its name. And of course, in the original movies, the sort of ancient Middle Eastern gods and demons and such, and magic users and possessed people and spirits of one kind or another, not simply ghosts. So the obake is in some ways closer to what the, the movie is actually about, even if we're simply calling them ghosts. Kini shitara make. If you care, you'll you'll lose. And I think care in this case means like if you worry unduly. And this is the sort of bridge into another classic Atarashi Gakko theme, right? In the next line Kyofu o keshi sara kosenju. We, we got this a ray gun that eradicates fear. Bu hanase jujuju. So let it rip. Fire, fire, yeah, shooting. But what's the target of the ray gun? Well, the target of the ray gun is not the ghosts, it's the fear in ourselves. So in a sense, even though we're shooting it outwards, in fact, we're shooting inwards. This is very, very Atarashi Gekko. And if you're familiar with the video game that they made last year, you'll know that uh, all the sort of the levels that you have to clear are all about targeting feelings of inadequacy or um, anxiety or fear in yourself using the band using Atarashi Gakko as your sort of support network to stand up for yourself, to resolve those inner conflicts, anxieties, depressions, um, things that can really get you down. This is a very prevalent theme in Japanese youth culture, and Atarashi Gakko are all about sort of getting you past that, which I think is, is what we're trying to do here. So we're not simply shooting at the ghosts as the villains. The real problem is our vulnerability to them. That's what we're targeting. 
I love incidentally that one of the things that we see throughout here is images of fear and images of cold. And I love the way that we also are constantly making bridges between Japan and New York. So here we take the icicles, which are a feature of the movie and appear all over the set of the video game. And we put them on Rin's head to make her into the Statue of Liberty, which I think is really cool. And we also get our first glimpse here of James Acaster, who's one of my favorite English comedians and one of the reasons I went to see this movie I'd love to see him doing um, appearing in something this iconic and cool Miju's bit we get to sort of slow things down a little bit and get into that slightly more reflective part which I think they do so well and again is reminiscent of, of Hanako Obiete Kanjo Megakate so we're still talking about those energy weapons we're aiming at the the frightened feelings the the feelings the emotions of of fear which that's what we're shooting at Yatsura ga Yatekuruzo they're, they're coming. So the monsters are coming, the ghosts are coming, but also those feelings are coming. That's what we're targeting. And now we go into the chorus proper. Ghostbusters. Obake nanka kowakunai. Which, of course, is I'm not scared of ghosts, or to put it another way, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> this is a direct uh, imitation of the Ray Parker Jr. original song. They posed with him, of course. Ghostbusters. Anato wa hitori janai. This is, again, very Atarashi Gakko. You are not alone. Put that on a t-shirt, man. That's what they're all about. It's about that support system. And if you think of that pilotis on their first album, the image of a network of, of supporting um, entities, other people, and it's what Atarashi Gakko are all about. So let's let us help you. Leave it leave it to us. We'll take off your anxiety, your stress, your fear. We'll take that on ourselves. As the Ghostbusters, but also as Atarashi Gekko. Uh Tanaru Uida. Um Yeah, I don't know what this means. <laughs> and neither does anybody else, so far as I can tell. I, I've looked online, I've run it through various translations, I've spoken to a couple of Japanese friends and Japanese speakers, and I, we don't really have a good translation for this. I, I've seen it rendered as brightly colored light. Teraru Nuida, maybe? I mean, in which case, is that us? I guess we're sort of the figures of light standing against the darkness possible, but it also could just be sound. It could be like a, a sort of la la la. I love that image of the the ghost museum subway station, but also right before it, the AG station, the Atarashi Gakko. And again, we're seeing that bridge between the AG version, the Japanese version, and the the New York City version, which is central to the to the song. Back to Koina Koina, scary it's gay. Dare mo inai kyo shitsu, and an empty classroom. Again, this sort of grounding in a version of ordinary fear, particularly ordinary fear for young people, that sense of spaces that are deserted, spaces that are familiar, which become strange when there's no one there. Koina, koina, scary. Sugu tonari ni iru. It's right, right next door. These, these scary things that are close to us, they're not exotic, they're not, you don't go into a completely different world. The scary stuff is always really close to you. Again, very atarashi kaka. And we're back to Rin, and this is my favorite part of the song. I love this. Ichi ni sanchi go, right? So one, two, three, four, five, go, go, 
then becomes Ghost, Ichini Sanshi Ghost. But also, if you are a fan of baby metal, you're familiar with Yon no Uta, song four, you'll also know that she, number four, is associated with death. So we go one, two, three, death, ghost, which is cool. I, I love the way also Rin specifically takes on that the ghost position there, this classic image of, of ghosts in traditional Japanese art, which makes sense given some of the other references in this section. Akime heya kara kabe don don, pounding on the walls from an empty room. Darimo inaino ni kata tonton, tapping on your shoulder even though there's nobody there. So we're using the don don and the tonton as onomatopoeic rhymes for contact, for sound. Kono yo wa taksan mi kimi o yo. This world has a lot of appealing things, many, many charms. I'm not sure if this is the, the voice of the ghost trying to sort of either draw you into its world or saying that it's establishing itself in, in your world. And that's possible either way. And then it shifts. And I love this. Ghost calling. And as soon as you hear it, you, the, the rhythm shifts slightly. And this is the a, a direct imitation of their own previous single, Tokyo Calling. Which is a song about scary, ordinary social problems going on in Tokyo, in contemporary Japan, imagined as the sort of Godzilla attack, Gojira attack, and Atarashi Gakko coming together to try and be a sort of focal point for a group solidarity and standing up and finding out our communal strength to survive the difficulties right and that's what's going on here and you see it it's not just in the sort of shift in the rhythm and the ghost calling the direct echo of it but also you see it in the choreography it's exactly the same as what they're doing in the tokyo calling video machiwa hyaki yako the city is the night parade of a hundred demons. This is a, a classic Edo period visual image of, of ghosts and obake and yokai moving through the town, right? And, and people watching as these sort of scary things move through the town. So it's scary, but it's also slight, sometimes slightly comic. But it's this idea of the city... And here, you know, the city is as much Tokyo as it is New York as a scary place, right, where the supernatural scares of stories and art are a kind of metaphorical manifestation of actual real things. Marude akumode mitasekai sonomono. So it's like we're looking at the world through a nightmare. So we're stuck inside it. And again, baby metal fans might hear a connection there to Akumano Rondo, the Rondo of, of Nightmares. But yeah, I love this. I love the way that that it makes that very Japanese connection. And I sus this is why, you know, the song is being used in the Japanese version of the movie and maybe why it's not being used in the US version of the movie, though I still think it's a missed opportunity. <laughs> Canon gets to do her bit. Futon ni kakurete itate. The ghost is hiding under the futon or inside the futon. And again, futon rather than bed, because this is the Japanese version. Yatsura wa yatakeruzo. They're coming. And now into the chorus, which we heard before. Ghostbusters. Obake nanka kawakunai. I'm not scared of ghosts. Anata wa hitori janai, you're not alone, watashitachi ni omakase, leave it to us, terarurira, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Thank you. 
I love it that we get to see them wearing the Ghostbusters uniform. It's another image of that, that sense in which they are sort of taking on the iconic status of all the other things that we've been seeing throughout the video, um, claiming and an ownership over something that has been around for 40 years. I love that. I think that, you know, the other thing I would say, and one of the reasons I wish that this, the song had been used in the US version is that in certain respects, whatever else the film is, it does enact a certain kind of Atarashi Gako preoccupation thematically. It's kind of an odd film. Um, the Structurally, it takes a long time to get going, and then it ends quite quickly. Most of the, the, the battle with the bad guy stuff doesn't happen until very late in the story. But if you step back from it, you can see that even though it's an ensemble piece, the real protagonist is Phoebe, the young girl. And her journey is very Atarashi Gako. She wants to be an adult, but isn't allowed to because she's not old enough. This is Otonaburu. It's a whole bunch of other thematic songs. It's, it's a very adolescent preoccupation. She's figuring out who she is, who she wants to be, and who she wants to be with. There's a, a potential girl, ghost, friend, slash lover that never quite materializes, um, that, that I think is, is also very much um, a part of that sort of self-determination thing that A.G. are always singing about. And ultimately, the story is about her finding her power and her ability to conquer her feelings of inadequacy and take action. It's pure Atarashi Gako. And the battle that happens at the end finally creates a sense of family and unites generations, both in the literal family within the movie but also that sort of larger sense of family, which is really a sort of generational notion of the movie franchise, right? That the, the connecting of the original cast to new people, to the younger people, including Phoebe, but also to the new geeky, awkward Brit uh, presented by James a Acaster. And if you know anything about James Acaster, all his comedy is really about battling personal fears and demons and trying to sort of find a way to become comfortable with yourself. Is that all implied by the movie? No, but I think that when part of what we like about seeing familiar actors in a film, apart from getting to see them do something different, is that they bring with them all the other things that you associate with them. So it tends to layer meaning within the movie. And I think that that kind of thing is going on here. And I think it squares perfectly with what Atarashi Gekko are all about, which I think is, is pretty cool. Is it a, a, a brilliant song of itself? Not of itself, but I think it's doing really interesting things as a sort of riff on something that already exists. And I do think that it's really interesting and smart in terms of retuning that pre-existing thing to suit their interests. And I think it's clever and quirky and, and fun. Yeah, good. I do love that they seem to be really enjoying themselves and that while the, the musicality of the song might not be particularly interesting or complex, they're obviously having a lot of fun with it and it has their trademark positivity and energy to it. That's good enough for me. And that's all I'm going to say. As ever, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my merchandise. I have some new shirt designs and things like that. I um, Check out my books particularly, of course, if you are interested in Japanese ghosts and yokai and things like that. Check out Hideki Smith, Demon Queller, if you have not done so already. Check out my Patreon page. Thank you to my patrons. I say this every time, but without them, I probably wouldn't be making these videos at all. They um, support me and help me justify doing this kind of work. And that's it. Thanks. Talk to you soon.